For the Envirothon test, you need to be familiar with soil surveys. Now there's two different sources of soil surveys that are commonly used, and sometimes at a test site, you might need to look up information at that moment for the area you're in. This is a historic soil survey booklet, which you may be able to pick up at a field office with NRCS or your conservation district. This is considered a out of date material because it's hard to update a booklet once it's been published, but they're often very useful. Each booklet is gonna have the same sections for the most part that are identifiable in a table of contents, so you can easily find what you need to. Then the maps are gonna be in the back. This is the index map sheet, which will help you locate where you need to get the correct map information. You can use the highways, the rivers, the other landmarks for the area to locate exactly which map sheet you need to go to. So we're gonna go towards uh, this map sheet number 22. Behind the index map sheet are all of the soil maps for the survey area. So I can flip to page 22. This is the actual soil survey for that map sheet 22. On it, I can see the soil lines as they've been drawn and they're identified with a unique symbol. Then I can locate the symbol I need to for the location I'm in and look up the information for that symbol in other locations of the booklet. So let's go ahead and use symbol RHB. This is an older soil survey booklet, so I need to look at the legend to find out what the map unit name is for RHB. In newer soil survey booklets, that information may even be in the table of contents. So from here, I can look up, they're in alphabetical order. RHB is on the symbol right here, and it lines up with red rock silt loam, one to 3% slopes. Now that I know my map unit is red rock silt loam, I can use the table contents of this older survey booklet to identify exactly what page the information for red rock series is. And that is on page 52. Okay, okay. Page 52 has information for the red rock series and then it may also have information for the individual map units that series exists in. The very first one that it lists for me is the Red Rock Silt Loam 1 to 3% slopes for that map unit on the map sheet that I found. So this is going to give me some general description information for the Red Rock series. For additional information about that Red Rock soil series and particular land uses, I need to look in the use and management of the soils section of the soil survey. These are gonna have descriptions of the different land uses and then tables of information specific to that series. I'm particularly interested in crops and pasture management. So I'm gonna look at the first section here that starts on page 63. Okay. Page 63 gives me a description of the information, but for specific information about the Red Rock series, I need to turn to the back of this section where it will have tables. In the back of every one of these information sections of different land uses is a table of specific properties for that map unit or soil series. This one for crops and management happens to be uh, estimated average yields per acre of the principal crops for the area. So I can go to my Red Rock silt loams, one to 3% slopes and follow it across to see what the principal crop is and what the estimated yield would be. In this case, the principal crop for that particular soil at the survey area at that time was non-irrigated crop wheat and the estimated bushels of yield are 23. Nowadays, the most current information is going to be on the web soil survey. And this is a printout map for a custom area that we're having the contest today with the most up-to-date information of the soils in this area. Instead of having a large survey booklet, all of that is housed on the web. and We only print out the sections that we need. So this map here has the soil lines drawn on it and they're labeled. I can then print off this PDF, which will have the legend of the map, which gives me the symbol and the map unit name and then the individual acreages for the area I delineated. I can also identify other features from Web Soil Survey that are important for the contest area. 
Instead of flipping to a different section of the survey book, I have the map unit description right in my printout. For each page, there's a summary of information about those map units specifically for the soil survey of the field I've identified. We also have the tables that would be under the different sections of the soil survey booklet in this same report that we selected when we were generating it from Web Soil Survey. This is a table of the physical soil properties of the soil map units for our area of interest. All of this information is condensed into one easy to reference table so that I can find it quickly in case there's a test question that's around that. For this one, I might be curious about the saturated hydraulic conductivity of the Green River soil series. I can quickly go to this table, find the correct column and the soil series, and it'll give me the ranges of that soil property. That way I can have that information readily available for any of the different land use questions there may be on the test.